Hello, welcome back to the channel. Right before I start, I just want to say that the story that I'm about to read was written by one of my subscribers, Joseph the Snail. Thank you, Joseph, for allowing me to read your story and for contributing to the channel. I appreciate it greatly. And if anybody else has any stories they would like me to read, whether it be creepypasta suggestions or a story you've written yourself, please let me know in the comments down below or you can let me know in my channel's Discord. I would appreciate it greatly. So thank you, Joseph for allowing me to read your story. I never thought about posting here, but I have a story to share with you guys. Just promise me that you're not going to laugh. There's not a lot I know about the situation, and I can't process anything. So if I have bad English or anything else, I apologize. I'm shaking right now, so I can hardly write. But here's a story to describe it to you. And it's not very good. So, you know those shows we like to watch on television? Like Spongebob, Squarepants, The Amazing World of Gumballs, and others? I'm bringing these shows up because they are examples of shows that you and I used to watch. Have you ever found anything weird or creepy about these shows? Admit it. You certainly did. And I did too. But it wasn't as bad as others think. It was just for the comedy. Aside from those shows, let's get to the story I'm about to tell you all. Again, I'm sorry if I don't describe my thoughts and feelings about this. This show just fills me with dread anyway. Here goes nothing. In late November, I inherited a home and was in the process of clearing out what was left of the estate of my great aunt who had passed away. When I stumbled upon a very old DVD of an obscure show, the box was badly damaged but the disc was in seemingly perfect condition. The mystery had piqued my interest, so I loaded up on my DVD player to check it out. There were no problems with starting the DVD, except for a black screen that lasted for 30 seconds. After about 30 seconds, the text, Sammy the Cat, slowly rolled across the screen, followed by the year 2019 in a smaller font. This was dumbfounding because my great aunt passed away in 2020 and we were only recently granted access to her estate. I'm told many of these DVDs were watched by a child who would babysit when she still lived at home. She was at a nursing home from 2017 until her passing. I was interrupted and the show continued. After the title card, the screen quickly fades into white. The white fades into a shot of a lightly furnished, mostly empty room with a door to the left. Rather quickly, however, a large cat enters the frame. The cat is prominently white but has black patches and spots. The screen was very blurry, so it's extremely hard to make out, but it appears to be a person in a cat costume. As it turns around, I notice the large cheeks, googly eyes, and stitches on the front portion of his body. The odd proportions of the costume led me to believe it to be homemade. After turning around, the cat proceeds to stare in the direction of the camera for what felt like minutes until, again, the screen goes white, which lasts for a good minute. After a few minutes of white screen, the costume man is seen eating from a bowl, a bowl of what appears to be raw meat. The source is unknown, I will leave it up to you to determine what the meat is. After emptying the bowl, the man leaves the frame 
only to return about 30 seconds later, holding the hand of a masked woman. The woman was silent and frozen, and I'd almost assume she was unconscious if not for her footsteps alongside him. The man leads her to the backside and sits her down. He sits down next to her until he eventually starts to shake, and the shakes start to get worse and more aggressive, and the man is now slightly turned away from the woman and is, once again, sitting completely still. This must have lasted for a couple of minutes until he reached back and grabbed the woman by the neck. The woman let out a blood curling scream that is so loud that the camera audio struggles to pick it up and the man covers his ears and starts yelling. The man stands up, also pulling her up involuntarily. The woman is dragged by the neck and then drop it. At this point, my heart is racing and I am confused and in shock at what I'm afraid I found. This felt too real and unhinged to be some indie film, but filled it with dread, I continue to watch it unfold. Little do I know, however, that I will soon wish I'd turn it off. After dropping the woman, the man frantically runs through a door to the left side of the main room, perhaps a small closet, because his right leg is still sticking out. When inside, he shuffles around for about 10 to 20 seconds until he suddenly turns around to reveal a long barreled shotgun pointed directly towards the woman. The woman, still blindfolded, is sitting on the floor unsettlingly silent. There is an overwhelming sense of hopelessness that flows through my body as I watch her exist, completely oblivious to what's pointing at her. She isn't allowed to see it coming. After standing for a moment, the man lowers the gun, casually walks over to the camera and turns it off. The screen goes dark and that is the last of the contents of the DVD. The woman was presumably killed in this scene because I heard a gunshot during it and what followed was the blood curling screams of the woman. The show then ended. After the show ended, a few days of boredom and some hesitation, I decided to report this to the local police department. They took it as evidence, but I'd be lying if I said I'd heard anything back. I became concerned about what had happened to the woman and I would prefer the closure of knowing rather than the uneasy ignorance that I'd been living in for the past few weeks. I've been terrified of something, I hope it wasn't true, but was afraid it might be. It was eating me alive, so yesterday I decided to reach back into the box where I found the original disc because I hadn't looked very truly the first time. After anxiously shifting for about 30 seconds, a convulsive shock is delivered through my entire body when I see it. To my dismay, I spotted yet another unlabeled damaged disc container sitting along the border of the box, but I couldn't bring myself to touch it, much less open it, and ever since then, I've been feeling uneasy. I thought about disposing of it so I didn't have to deal with it, but I don't want to get rid of something that may potentially be the solution to a case. However, there was more than I thought. Without hesitation, I grabbed the DVD and inserted the damaged disc. I was hoping for more evidence, and these were the events that occurred after the first disc. The disc was broken, but started with the cat again, and he was talking to a five-year-old boy. And he asked the boy to follow him to the blender that was in the previous disc. And he picked up the boy and turned him into a smoothie. And the cat came back to his closet and put the long barrel shotgun 
into the closet, letting out a huge sigh as though he regretted what he'd done, and the entire thing was cut, and the DVD ends. I started questioning this show and the fact that this man didn't even put it in the nearby shop for DVDs except for my great aunt's house that I inherited. And I can understand why. It seems very unrealistic for some anonymous person to put their snuff film in a public store for others to watch. I turned it off the DVD, took it out of the player and reported it to the police department. I shared some evidence with them and I have many questions after sharing the evidence. This is up to you to answer. Who was the man in the cat costume? Is the man related to my great aunt? And why was he killing people? I will allow you to figure it out. As for the second DVD, I ended up reporting it to the police as well. When again visiting the police department, I found out he was already serving time in prison on unrelated charges. They are now investigating the contents of the second DVD of the show. I feared for my life. I had never seen anything unexplainable and weird until now, and to this day, a feeling of dread is always coming over me, and I feel like I did something wrong. When I tell people about this moment, they always give me strange looks, and they keep assuming I had a bad nightmare when I didn't. At least, for the later events, it was a nightmare. I'm sorry, this should have been prevented. But due to my curiosity, I wanted to watch the show because I wanted to know what it was. I'm now feeling guilty for what just happened, even though I didn't do anything wrong. I was getting tired, so I went to sleep, but the show stayed on my mind while I tried to sleep, and I eventually went to sleep. As I was trying to go to sleep to forget about what had happened, I started dreaming and this dream seemed normal at first. I will share my dream, if you can call it that. To me, I call it a nightmare. I'm sitting in my chair. My living room is decently furnished and my TV is running in complete static. When the static ended after 12 minutes, the old Warner's Brother logo flashed on the screen, revealing the text, Sammy the Cat. I knew how this was going to go, but I don't recall seeing Warner's Brothers at the beginning. Was this made by Warner's Brothers? Perhaps a lost show? I don't know. I continue watching. The episode started with the camera pressed against Sammy's face with the giant fake smile and what I could make out that were finger holes where the eyes are. The thing I never heard from Sammy was his voice. Hello there. I would like to talk. His voice was cheerful, deep and loud and it sounded like he was old. He spoke out to me. I tried to move. But I'm having those dreams where I can't move at all. He said some sentence that made my heart break. Your great aunt deserved to die. When that sentence came out of his mouth, it broke my heart and I held back the urge to cry. I loved her and she left me. When she left me, I was broke. That's why I tried to make my own show to get my money back. The voice was getting closer to the screen and it almost sounded like he was whispering in my ear. I began to get chilled. I could hold back tears as best I could. Sammy saw me holding back tears. Then the camera zoomed in on what appeared to be a shotgun in his hand. I eventually stopped tearing up looking blankly at the shotgun, my eyes now shaking. Sammy pulled the trigger. The bullet hit the camera, possibly the cameraman too. As I heard a 
blood curling screen and saw drops of blood with the camera glitching. The television turned off and I heard an aggressive knock at the door beside me. I had nowhere to go. I accepted my fate. Sammy barged into the room holding a sledgehammer. The cat ran towards me and hit me with the sledgehammer. I went to sleep and am now unconscious. I finally woke up from the nightmare and I'm finally happy that I'm alive and well with no bruises or anything. I got the idea to call Warner's Brothers Entertainment because I saw the logo on my TV during the nightmare so it's appropriate that I do so. I dialed the company and asked them if they ever had a show called Sammy the Cat or anything related to it. I was met by an unexpected response. They said yes, much to my shock. The guy who played Sammy was friends with the people behind Warner's Brothers, commonly known to some people as the Warrens. The show was in the works, but the workers noticed that the man was upset about something so they ended production with Sammy the Cat entirely. Sammy's actor was suffering from schizophrenia, anxiety and depression. If I'm being honest, I kind of feel bad for him, despite the fact that he was a serial killer. The company also told me that some of the crew members rumored that he was responsible for the four Warner's deaths. Now keep in mind, that if you call the company and ask them about Sammy the Cat, they will try to hide the truth by saying, No, we don't have a show called that. I have the truth now. We've been on the call long, so we hung up. And for the company's sake, don't call the company and ask them about the show, for goodness sake. And if you're wondering how I'm doing right now, I'm feeling down as a person. I have depression and I have anxiety about things now. I do not have a schizophrenia, however. Anyway, thank you for reading about my experience, whoever is reading this. I want to get my story out there somewhere. I just want you to be careful and think before you watch the things. If you want to watch these things, do it at your own risk.